Hello scholars, my name is Kanan Kaumba Boy. I'm going to take you through notion of power in school. First, we are going to define power, then we are going to look at the types of power, then lastly we look at the responses of the stakeholders to the power when applied to them. To begin with, power is defined as the influence A has over B to the extent that he can get B to do something that B would not otherwise have done. Quite a mouthful. It means that A has authority to make B do something that he wishes. From the definition, three concepts come out. One, potential. Two, dependency. Three, scarcity. Potential means there is one person who owns the power in this power relationship. This power gives him the ability to restrict the resources that the other has. And uh, the restricting of the resources makes B to be dependent on A because A has the control over the resources that B needs. Therefore, it is apparent that there is scarcity of resources which must be shared out. These resources are held by a person exercising power and are not at all available or are very limited in supply. Therefore, what does this mean? That there is various kind of power depending with how we exercise our authority. And that's what we are going to look at next. Power is manifested in this manner. One, we have legitimate power. It refers to the ability to influence others because of the position one holds in an organization. It is called authority or the right to command. Second, we have reward power. It is based on the person's ability to reward a follower for compliance. And it occurs when someone possesses a resource that another person wants and will exchange that resource for certain behavior. Third, we have the coercive power. It is the power to punish. It is based on fear and intimidation. It comes from legitimate power, and it can come informally due to fear of rejection by co-workers. Another type of power we have is the expert power. Expert power is based on an individual's special and valued expertise. The lower the substitutability of the expertise, the greater the expert power. And lastly, we have the referent power. It is based on an individual's charisma and communicational skills. This, this makes an individual to be able to influence others to do what they may not have otherwise have done. There, these types of power definitions have been extracted from French and Raven in their seminal work of 1957. Uh, having said that, let's look at the possible responses to the use of power in an organization. One, when power is applied to the followers, there are three ways in which they will respond. One is through resistance. They will resist the request with their, without apparent cause or in an arrogant manner. This is most likely response to coercive power. Two, the use of power may lead to compliance. They may comply with the request by meeting minimal expectations while withholding extra effort. This is usually elicited by legitimate and reward power and reward powers. And lastly, we have commitment. Here, the followers are enthusiastic. They have release of energy and talent to satisfy the leader's request. These are usually brought by by the referent and expert power, which will enable the followers to produce their inner talents. Well, that is the end of our lesson. But to conclude, we want to state that power has been used to achieve the organizational goals. And that as a leader, you have a reporter of power to use. You can use one or you can use a combination of others as long as they achieve 
to the achievement of your goal. Thank you for listening. Bye.